Hey lads, welcome back to the channel. We are gonna be doing a don't blow your coverage today. Cause it's been a while. I was actually looking at Lit Hub to look for recent releases to pull covers for this and they posted an article today and it was like 300 books you need to read before 2023. Which is like terrifying um, because of time. But these are all actually upcoming releases, so that's cool. I'm not going to go into content of what these books are about at all. We're simply reacting to their covers, but it might give you exposure to some things that are coming up, which is also exciting. Uh, lots of things I haven't seen in here before, so that is always cool to think about new books. My usual caveat, I am not a designer, I just play one on TV. <laughs> uh, but I do have a lot of opinions. So let's get into it, shall we? We shall. I'm gonna actually try to like crop it like half half and half this time. That would be cool if that worked. It probably won't, knowing my iMovie editing look, but we'll try to do it anyway. Okay, all this could be different, a novel by Sarah Thankem Matthews a illustrated kind of like oil pastel figurative painting going on between that's not completely rooted in realism. We have some green people and some pink people. Uh, I really like the drawing that this cover is made up of. It tries to make you kind of unpack the story and pick apart these little micro interactions that are happening, isn't it? I always like when book covers you purpose already existing art, you know what I mean? Like if, if it can be a painting, it can be a book cover, usually. <laughs> um, I think this type treatment is fine. We know I don't like a novel in a scrawled font, but the, the drop text of the yellow, the yellow hint behind all of the text is fun. And not overtly trendy while still having a little personality and being bubbly. I like it. I approve. I wonder what publisher this is. An Honest Living by Dwyer Murphy, a novel. Okay, giving Saul Bass, first of all, like you can't look at this and not think of Saul Bass, who's an incredibly famous graphic designer, uh, did so many prolific movie poster designs specifically, kind of this modernist layered approach using this uh, cubist language which i think is employed here a little bit i like it it is very referential of that time with the cars on the street as well as with this like very obvious Saul bass nod uh giving movie poster giving movie poster probably like a crime thriller book if i had to say but a literary one magnolia poems by nina minya powells this is pretty color blocked we have some sort of are those peonies maybe in a vase in the center it's intriguing it's layered but it's still soft and approachable kind of almost looks like a magazine layout with this hierarchy of the text right i wonder if that's on purpose uh it doesn't blow me away but it is not like pastel blobs you know what i mean so i'm, I'm happy to see it stay true by hua Wasu? A memoir. Hmm. I like the... <laughs> I don't know, there's some things that... They, it's kind of corny. Like, the, the photographer being captured and, like, looking at the viewer like that. It just feels a little tweet to me. And a memoir on, like, a scrap of paper and that handwritten scrawl. That's not my favorite, but I really like the type hierarchy, giving equal weight to both the title and the author's name and the color schemes going on here is fun too. Uh, not my favorite for aforementioned reasons, but I'm not mad at it. Oh my god, Woman Without Shame, Woman Without Shame by Sandra, Sandra Cisneros? Oh man, I love this cover. <laughs> What a striking photograph. How surreal is that? Like a perfect photograph, really. I will forgive the handwritten nature of this text because it's one, not saying a novel or saying whatever genre the book is. And it's the author's name and that pop of yellow is so good on that black and white background. I love how anthropomorph anthropomorphized, again, that's another word we know I can't say on the channel, this cactus petal has become and the, the eyes drilled out for holes and the nude figure it's 
pretty stunning. Life Ceremony by Sayaka Murata. Stories. Okay, that's an anatomical human heart in this hot pot situation we have going on, so I'm scared already. We know Sayaka Murata does some weird ass shit. Um, which I think is intriguing. For all this is like overly simple, I think, for my taste and not even like in a minimal way. It's just kind of missing an element, but maybe that is the point. So you dig for the human heart. I, I think if there was a slightly more interesting font being chosen, I would have a better reaction or reception to this. But overall, it's like, it's missing a little something for me as it is now. Great Man Theory by Teddy Wayne. A novel. <laughs> um, this looks like that Verge. A anytime I see kind of like the psychedelic rainbow pattern now, I think of that, that book cover, The Verge, that came out a couple of years ago which was really striking, but it's just like cemented in my mind as this now. I like how, how the man's silhouette is not, the man's head silhouette is not perfect. And like, if you see the pink there, it's overlapping the M and like obscuring some of the type slightly. That definitely adds a lot of like dynamic tension that's like subtle at the same time to this kind of simplistic head illustration. I'm not mad at it. But I don't love it. Fire Season by Lena Crow. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, fire motifs and forest, like, ugh, and like a woman's figure from profile. I don't know. This is corny. This is corny. It's like trying to imbue way too much meaning in these symbols. And I feel like I've seen it so many times before. It's just like repetition at this point don't like it. The Deceptions, a novel by Jill Bielaus Bielowski. Ooh, what does this remind me of? This reminds me of True Romance. Was that the name of that book that came out with the, it was like kind of like a vaporwave, like Greek bust skull book maybe a couple of years ago. It really looks like that. I would not be surprised if it was the same jacket designer. Uh, how do I feel about this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, I think what it mostly is, is the gradient texture applied to everything. I, it, it feels like an Instagram Canva graphic to me right now, that kind of overtly textured gradient that's applied in almost like these duotone applications. I think that's what I'm not responding to well and just doesn't feel like very timeless to me and also at the same time doesn't feel like super on trend it's like stuck in that weird uh in between <gasps> love which side are you on a novel by ryan lee wong this is a great cover this is a great cover i really like sign painting as like an art and as like like a, a way for for text to be shown i think it's really beautiful and special and needs to be preserved so this is like right up my alley and it's like photo real but graphic at the same time i really like it and it's kind of giving you a sense of place already like we're in a strip mall we're in a strip mall in la i bet i bet this is set in la and has something to do with a strip mall <laughs> um i really like it great cover okay the Crane Wife by C.J. Hauser. Oh, oh, C.J. <laughs> I mean, minimalist line drawing of a human figure, big bulky type. It's not doing anything new or interesting to me at all. And everything's like slightly too muted. Not my favorite. <gasps> Pretty, Normal Distance by Elisa Gabbert. What have I read by her? I've read something else by her. Did she do an essay collection previously? Okay, like, cubism, like, what is this called? Perspective drawing, P pointillism? Why do I want to say pointillism? Shout out if you graduated college from 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, I forget what, what kind of, like, Escher, okay? That's, that's an art school reference I could drop on you, MC Escher. That like perspective, um, weird, weird playgroundness. I think this is fun. 
the pastel palettes the pastel palette is really nice i like how the type is interacting and the illustration is kind of centered i don't know what it's about but i like it <laughs> the man who could move clouds okay concentric circles used to tell a story a la hidden valley road a la what's that other book the one about the fucking trees the overstory um i like that device to like hide meaning in the cover and like tell the different layers of the story overall i think this is okay i think it's like the scale probably actually of that center circle that is making this not super successful for for me it's like so large compared to the other ones so i'm i'm maybe guessing that the sense of place this seems like an island tropical place for some reason uh is important to the story that's what i get on first read not not my favorite but not the worst oh my god the marriage portrait by maggie o'farrell maggie o'farrell is addicted to having bad covers <laughs> like do we remember hamnet do we remember the american hamnet you guys she loves the text reveal effect she loves like this tearing away layered thing historical portrait which i guess makes sense for her work you know i guess that makes sense in what we're doing right now with historical novels but i i feel like we could do something and not be so genre based right like i feel like they're really concerned when selling her book to to let you know it's historical fiction which i guess makes sense from a marketing point of view but also this is just like really boring to look at in my perspective not my favorite whoa <laughs> half outlaw by alex temblador what in the cat von d <laughs> um that's interesting i really like like beautiful handwritten type like this and you can tell this is a bespoke type illustrator who they hired to do this which is cool all of those flourishes like it's very like tattoo culture to me you know what i mean um is this placed on oh is it a leather jacket i think it's a leather jacket that's interesting i mean this is corny but it is saying something about what it's about, most likely. Like if this is not, you know, punk alt ruck, rucker in some capacity, I would be shocked. Whoa, this is a very quiet cover. Wonderland's Essays on the Life of Literature by Charles Baxter. Okay, this is a painting of a room with a toy train, very eerie, very quiet, very subdued. Interesting. It's giving um, New York review of books. <laughs> the Pink Hotel by Liska Jacobs. Okay, obviously emulating the Beverly Hills Hotel, very famous signage. This looks super corny to me and I think was done like, it, it's like too vectory and too, whatever like burning, oh, oh, is it supposed to be on fire? Looks like it's on fire in the background, huh? uh maybe that makes sense for why the leaves are all crisped up then but like the top left leaves those are two vector like flat shapes like some of it looks photoreal and some of it looks too vectory and that tension is confusing me yeah it's definitely supposed to be burnt okay i don't know i don't like it <laughs> but it is layered with meaning self-portrait with ghosts by meng jean short stories okay interesting this is like i feel like this is supposed to be like paint brush strokes but it was manipulated in a 3d program and it's fun to look at it is the text hierarchy is a little off for me in this one like i feel like author of little god should be smaller i feel like the relationship of the author's name and the title are aren't quite one-to-one -one, and the title is like slightly decreased it's the text is the problem here for me if i survive you by jonathan escoferi this is out by fsg actually and when i saw it i was like oh that's a kind of a corny cover for fsg 
no offense FSG. What is on fire here? Is the eye and the eye supposed to be a match? The, the Jeep being like overlaid with the palm tree motif. I don't know. I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. <gasps> Total Stories by Rebecca Miller. Gorgeous. Um, a master class in minimalism and restraint. Great use of a photo on a cover. Kind of gross but alluring at the same time. I really like it. Harry Sylvester Bird by Chinello Oparanta. I mean, at least with this like blobby montage, you can like see the paper cut out so you know it's not done digitally and it has that tactileness to to this collage language but overall i still don't like it and think it is just gonna kind of like fade into the ether for all the other abstract shit that looks like this right why didn't you tell me a memoir by carmen rena wong this looks like the cover of how to write an autobiographical novel by alexander chi like 100 percent um I like using family photos for, for memoirs. I like the obstruction of the face of one of the figures on here. I think that's fun. It is alluring, um, but it's been done. It's very much so an established design language going on here being applied. Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. Really bad. Incredibly bad to me. I can't do this angle looking into the night sky from this perspective and seeing like treetops anymore. We're done. We are done with this. Bad Fruit by Ella King. This is also really bad to me. <laughs> um, kind of like 60s, 60s product photography references going on with that woman's hand. Uh, I like, I like that. I like that callback, but I don't think this is like super well executed or stylized enough. Like it's too minimal to, to be using that language at the same time. And I don't like this type. Two Nurses Smoking Stories by David Means. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Another masterclass on minimalism, baby. How striking is that image? Really good. Really good title too. This montage, Stories by Ling Ma, I love this cover too. This is gorgeous. Creepy. Fruit being suffocated by plastic? Creepy. I like it. Crying in the Bathroom, a memoir by Erica L. Sanchez. No! <laughs> no. The Force of Such Beauty by Barbara Borland? Interesting. Weird. Uncanny Valley. That like double exposure mistake in photography kind of giving you like a trippy little little viewing experience. It's not my favorite, but like it's doing something. You guys, my fucking camera died and I'm not I'm not waiting for it to charge. I need to buy another battery. That's really the lesson in all of this when I'm filming the rest of my phone. I don't know where to look. Is it there? Hope that's okay. The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. I like this cover. It looks like a Loteria card to me illustration wise i could do without the gradient background though i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest the last white man by mosin mosin masin hamid oh the author of xos great i like this this is fun i like purple i think more book covers should be this kind of lilac -y, vibrant purple i think it's pretty pretty different uh fun kind of like hand cut out paper paper motif going on with both the text and the illustration and you see you see how your eye is drawn to the entire part of this illustration it lets your eye move around between title the center and and the the author's name that's what art should do Witches by Brenda Lozano. I'm actually reading this right now, um, and I really like it. Look at that bright poppy cherry red. This uh, weird collage of a bird and a person. I like this type for what the book is about and the period it's set in, that big expanded C that's kind of grounding everything so along with those O's, really fun. I like it. Other Care by Lynn Tillman on obligation, love, death, and ambivalence. I really don't like this. 
at all. The cat casting a shadow, I don't know what it's trying to tell me. It is incredibly boring. Like not in a minimalistic way, just in a bad way. My government mean, means to kill me a novel by Rashid Newson. I like the text treatment. I like that it's curved. I like that it is breaking the page in an interesting way. I like this kind of arch being a divider. I wish the background wasn't a gradient rainbow, but I forgive it because I like the rest of the cover. And a black, a black contrast you have is nice, isn't it? Whoa, salmon wars, the dark underbelly of our favorite fish. Okay. <laughs> this looks like a nonfiction book about salmon, doesn't it? I don't need salmon, but I hope, I hope when this is printed, the water droplets have a spot gloss on them then I would allow this cover to exist. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Incredibly bad, really bad. Whoa, Kick the Latch by Catherine Scanlon. I like this, I have to say I like this. I think it's fun, I think it's doing something. It's striking, right? These are so scary and majestic. I like this cover. Is Mother Dead a novel by Vigdis, Vigdis Horth? Jorth. His Jorth. I like it. I know you're like, CJ, you talked shit about gradients earlier, and that's true, but like this is tonal at least. Like we're going through a warm color story to a cooler color story, which makes me think of like passage of time. I think where the author's name is placed in this illustration specifically is weird and fun. Like they could have put it in that blue little container at the bottom. I think that would be a more traditional placement of that, but it's kind of striking here, no? Like it's not completely centered. It's weird, I like it. But also looks a lot like the rabbit hutch. You know what I mean? I, I understand why gradients are so alluring to designers, but we have to stop. Diary of a Misfit, a memoir and a mystery by Casey Parks. I like this. I almost like it. <laughs> I, I like the text being all contained in that, that white block at the top. I would say the only thing I would change about this is maybe back up on that spray paint that texture a little bit in the corners. You know what I mean? Like I can do the duotone kind of like screen printing effect that's happening with the orange, but uh, it gets pretty obvious in the yellow bits there and it's not, not my favorite. I really thought that said Bad Eminem. <laughs> Bad Eminence by James Greer. So readability, not great, but it is a true handwritten type. Like this looks like it was scrawled in Sharpie, which is better than a fake computer generated type. I like this. That striking yellow and black and white is a great combination. I think that's been proven. This reflection of the swan is kind of eerie, how it's turned horizontal. You have to look at it a couple of times to figure out what it is. And when you notice the background is actually a person's face, a little bit of intrigue too, huh? Whoa! <laughs> Cat brushing by Jane Campbell. Creepy. I like this cover. Like highly detailed, photograph paired with the title where like is that a cat is that a cat's hair is that a human hair I I think this is pretty striking and um different okay that was my don't blow your cover it's been a long time I hope you hope you enjoyed these are all new releases coming up I will link the lit hub article which I found them on below but let me know if you have any other thoughts. If you loved a cover I hated, hated a cover I loved, would love to fight with you in the comments. Bye. Love you. Have a good day.